love and respect Pura Vida thanks for tuning in today I wanted to show some of the interesting research uh, that a lot of the community does a lot of people send me information uh, those of you who pass me the information know who you are I really appreciate you guys we just keep finding more and more correlation of America being the true old world the more and more we research the more and more we find we're basically proving that America has the oldest everything almost. All right. And we're going to uh, talk about a few things today. Before we start with the new articles and new information, I want to go over some previous information. We're going to go over an Atlantean book from Ignatius Donnelly and the Popol Vuh, the creation story, the Popol Vuh and Genesis, since we're talking about world's oldest today. Hope you enjoy. This here, Atlantis, the Antediluvian World by Ignatius Donnelly. We're back in this book. We've gone in this book before in other videos. All right, 1882. All right, so we're in uh, chapter six of this book, Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. This is here, Genesis contains a history of Atlantis slash America, right? The Hebrews are a branch of the great family of which the powerful commercial race, the Phoenicians, who were the merchants of the world 1500 years before the time of Christ were apart. The Hebrews carried out from the common storehouse of their race a mass of traditions, many of which have come down to us in that oldest and most venerable of human compositions, the book of Genesis. I have shown that the story of the deluge plainly refers to the destruction of Atlantis and that it agrees in many important particulars with the account given by Plato. The people destroyed were in both instances the ancient race that had created civilization. They had formerly been a happy and sinless condition. They had become great and wicked. They were destroyed for their sins. They were destroyed by water. But we can go farther, and it can be asserted that there is a scarcely a prominent fact in the opening chapters of the book of Genesis that cannot be duplicated from the legends of the American nations, and scarcely a custom known to the Jews that does not find its counterpart among the people of the New World. All right, so there's counterparts to the whole story in Genesis. He's letting you know. That's what he's letting you know. Even in the history of the creation, we find the similarities. The Bible tells us, Genesis 1, 2, that in the beginning, the earth was without form and void and covered with water. In the Kishé legends, we are told, Kishé Maya, the Kishé legends, we are told, at first all was sea, no man, animal, bird, or green herb. There was nothing to be seen but the sea and the heavens. So again, the Genesis tells us, right, there's nothing, no form, it's empty, just covered with water. The Kisha legend is telling us the same thing, all right? Now, before we continue, I just want to talk about that. They're talking about the Popol Vuh. And uh, do you know what the Popol Vuh is? Have you ever heard of the Popol Vuh when they're talking about the Kisha legends or the Kisha records or history, mythology, all right? The Popol Vuh. And so let's get into a little bit of the history of the, or what the Popol Vuh is, just in case. As it says here, Popol Vuh, the sacred book of the ancient Kishé Maya. And I just mean back up, look what they're showing right here. A cup of color, what's that? Yeah, so I'm going to read from the cover of the book, right from the very uh, beginning. It says, this is the first complete version in English of the book of the people of the Kishé Maya. The most powerful nation of the Guatemalan highlands in pre-conquest times and a branch of the ancient Maya, whose remarkable civilization in pre-Columbian America is in many ways comparable 
to the ancient civilizations of the Mediterranean. All right, you hear that? That's talking about Greeks, Egyptians, uh, Cretes, you know, all these people that are in that area, the Romans. Generally regarded as America's oldest book, the Popol Vuh, right? In fact, corresponds to our Christian Bible. What? Corresponds to our Christian Bible. So that's like their Bible. Is that what he's trying to say? And it is moreover the most important of the five pieces of the great library treasures of the Maya that survived the Spanish conquest. The Popol Vuh, the sacred book of the ancient Quiche Maya. All right, so again, in Genesis 1, right, what it says, the earth was without form and void and darkness. It was upon the face of the deep, the deep what? The waters, right? And the Spirit of God or the Spirit moved upon the face of the waters, hovered. What is that? Moved upon. All right. So it was darkness, it was emptiness. Now we're going to go into this part of the book where they're translating and writing the beginning of the Quiche uh, legend. And it says that this is the account of how all was in suspense, all calm and silence, all motionless, still, and the expanse of the sky was empty. Right? Genesis. So again, and the earth was without form and void, empty, void, empty, without form. This is the first account of the first narrative. There was neither man nor animal, birds, fishes, crabs, trees, stones, caves, ravens, grasses, nor forests. There was only the sky. The surface of the earth had not appeared. There was only the calm sea, calm sea, and the great expanse of the sky. There was nothing brought together, nothing which could make noise, nor anything which might move or tremble or could make noise in the sky. There was nothing standing, only the calm water, only what? Waters. The placid sea alone and tranquil, nothing existed. There was only immobility and silence in the darkness in the night. All right. So again, earth was without form and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The what? The deep what? Waters. Right. Again, they move upon the face of the what? Waters. Right? And then we said there was light and there was light and God saw the light and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. It was dark, right? Again, there was only immobility and silence in the darkness darkness all right and god saw light and there was good and god divided the light from the darkness and the earth was without form and void and darkness darkness only the creator the maker tepo kukumats and forefathers were in the water surrounded with light where what in the light surrounded with light all right and god said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light, that it was good, all right? God said, let the light be day and the darkness be called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. What? Then Tepu and Gukumats came together. Then they conferred about life and light. They would do so that there would be light and dawn or morning and night, all right? They did so. Again, God called the light day and the darkness night, all right? So he divided, right, the light from the darkness. All right. What they would do so that there would be light and dawn. This is what they would do so there would be night and day. And and who it would be who would provide food and sustenance. Food and sustenance the day with the sun, right? Growing things. Then came the word. The word, the vibration. The word. Then came the word, right? Remember what it says in John? It says the word. Then came the word. And there was. God is the word. Tepungu Kumats came together in the darkness, in the night, and Tepungu Kumats talked together. They talked then, discussing the deliberating. They agreed. They united their words and their thoughts. Then, while they meditated, it became clear to them that when dawn would break, man must appear. So, on the day, then they planned the creation and the growth of trees and thickets and the birth of life and the creation of man. Thus, it was arranged in the darkness and in the night by the heart of heaven, who was called Urakan. Thus let it be done. Let the emptiness be filled. Let the water recede and make a void. Let the earth appear and become solid. Let it be done. Let it be done. What? As in God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Let's go back. Let it be done. Let the emptiness be filled. Let the water recede and make a void. Let the earth appear and become solid. Let it be done. 
Again, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. Let the dry land appear, appear. Let it be done. Let the emptiness be filled. Let the water recede and make a void. Let the earth appear. Let the earth appear and become a solid. Let it be done. Thus they spoke. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be done in the sky and on the earth. Let there be light. Again, let's go back. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Thus they spoke. Let there be light. Let there be dawn in the sky and in on earth. There, there shall be neither glory nor grandeur in our creation and formation until the human being is made, man is formed. So they spoke. Then the earth was created by them. So it was in truth that they created the earth. Earth, they said, and instantly it was made. Like the mist, like a cloud, and like a cloud of dust was the creation. When the mountains appeared from the water, and instantly the mountains grew. Only by a miracle, only by magic art were the mountains and valleys formed. And instantly the groves of cypresses and pines put forth shoots together on the surface of the earth. And thus Gugumatz was filled with joy and he and exclaimed, Your coming has been fruitful, heart of heaven, and you, Urakan, and you, Chipi Kalhulka, Raksha Kalhulka. Our work, our creation shall be finished, they answered. First the earth was formed. The mountains and the valleys, the currents of water were divided. The rivulets were running freely between the hills and the water was separated when the high mountains appeared. Thus was the earth created when it was formed by the heart of heaven, the heart of earth, as they are called who first made it fruitful when the sky was in suspense and the earth was submerged in the waters. We're talking about Awa, the heart of heaven, the heart of earth, Mother Sky, Mother Earth, Awa, the great grandfathers. The Framer and the Shaper. So it was that they made perfect the work when they did it after thinking and meditating upon it. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called the Hethes, and God saw that it was good. Let the so there you go, right? You see how the Popol Vu is correlating with Genesis? So you can kind of see where the Genesis got its information. You are the book, is the point. We're not talking about religion here. You guys can see that Genesis 1 clearly almost matched word for word. What's written in the Popol Vu creation story, they're talking about waters and land coming out, first plants, fruits, mountains, and people, right? So Hawa, the great spirit, right? Separated the light from the darkness. He made water, separated the waters and made land. And then he created the seas, the rivers, the lakes, and water, right? Wata, agua, hawa, water. So the Kishe Maya are letting us know about where water came to be. So we're going to get started here. It says here, world's oldest water found in Canada. Oxford researchers say it dates back 1.6 billion years. This is from the print.in. We're going to read a couple articles, right? A team from the University of Toronto in Canada has discovered what could be the oldest water on Earth. The researchers found the samples of water from a mine in Ontario in 2009. Tests conducted by researchers at the University of Oxford found that the mean age of the samples was 1.6 billion years old, making it the oldest water sample ever found on Earth. The team also found microbes in the water samples which survived in the trace amounts of hydrogen and sulfate. While such life forms are known to exist on the ocean floor, this is the first time that such microbial life has been found deep within the continents, all right? This is the very first time. It doesn't exist anywhere else. Not over there in Africa, not over there in the Middle East, Mesopotamia, supposedly, the fake Mesopotamia, because we got our own Mesopotamia in South America, in case you don't know. While such life forms are known to exist on the ocean floors, this is the first time that such microbial life has been found deep within the continents. The findings may help scientists better understand ancient Earth and how life evolved on this planet, ancient Earth, where? Here in America, Canada. And we're moving on. We're into sciencetimes.com. This is from April 28, 2021. 
World's oldest water found in Canada sheds light on the beginning of life. The beginning of life. Beginning of life matching the Popo Vu in Genesis. Here in America, again, Canada. In 2019, geologists and earth sciences, Professor Dr. Barbara Sherwood and Lowler at the University of Toronto received the top science prize at the Gerhard Herzberg Canada Gold Medal for Science and Engineering worth $1 million for discovering the world's oldest water. She got money, huh? Her discovery also won her the NSERC's John C. Polanyi Award in 2016. According to Mining.com, Lawler's insights about the nature of water and Earth on Earth have opened the door to further discovery about the origins, all right, about the what origins and evolution of this planet, where here in Canada, they're finding samples of the oldest water, and it's helping what? Discover the beginning of life, right? The origins. Dr. Lawler and her team's earlier explorations in 2013 in the active copper sink silver mine in Timmins, Ontario, have led to the discovery of the world's oldest water. They found it at a depth of 2.4 kilometers in Kid Creek Mine. Geochemical analysis of the water sample showed that it was 1.6 billion years old. So far, the oldest ever found on Earth. Oliver War, a postdoctoral researcher and the leader of the team, told CBC that this discovery could have significant ramifications on how life might exist and survive in such depths. An article in McLean's reported that the musty smell of the oldest water is its dead giveaway. It literally is following your nose right up to the rock to find a crack or the cracks where the water is discharging, says Lawler. She noted that the water is highly saline which is 10 times saltier than seawater. But despite its musty smell, it required more than a gifted snoosh to locate it. The tests know the age of the water sample involved measuring the radiogenic noble gases of helium and xenon. Lawler explained that the water accumulated these elements as it sits there for a long time. They also noticed sediments forming at the bottom of the water sample transferred in 2020 to ingenium which they identified as the precipitate from the water after being exposed to oxygen from the air. But they were more surprised by what they discovered upon analyzing the oldest water. Researchers collected additional water samples from the holes where they drilled inside the mine to get the water. According to the scientists, after studying them under the microscope, they found microbial life in the sediment. This is in the uh, Canadian Geographic.ca. Oldest water in the world discovered in Canada old is water two billion year old water held deep in earth's crust could hold clues to life on other planets now now they want to go to so-called other planets are huh? beyond the poles you mean beyond the ice wall scientists from the universe of Toronto have discovered what is believed to be the oldest water known on earth about two billion years in northern ontario finding that could point the way towards the possible existence of life on mars all right so i wanted to show you guys that it's all over the place ScienceAlert.com, the world's oldest water lies deep below Canada and is 2 billion years old. So just confirming the Popo Vu and Maya and their creation story in their land. The oldest water found on Earth is here in the Americas. Now the Popo Vu in Genesis chapter 1 also stated, right, that land appeared, right? They separated the waters and land appeared, the first land. So we got the oldest water. Do we have the oldest land also? Now, for those who have been following me over the years, you guys know this book. We've gone over it many times, right? We're going to read what it says here. Geological Sketches by Louis Agassiz. This is from 1873. In case you don't know, Louis Agassiz is the most famous uh, geologist that has existed Um you know, in, in academia, in their mainstream uh, societies, if you do take geology in college or universities, you have to, this is part of your curriculum right here. Louis Agassiz's Geological Sketches. We're going to read what he says in the very first chapter of this book, as you guys can see here in the contents. Number one, America, the old world. America is the old world. And we're in chapter one. America, the old world. This ain't no new world. This is the true old world. I've been trying to tell you. First born among the continents, though so much later in culture and civilization, 
than some of more recent birth. And that's a lie. We debunked that as well. He's a geologist, so he stays in his lane. He's just talking about the land. He don't know if the first humans or anything like that didn't come out of here. He's guessing because they taught him that people came out of Mesopotamia, right? But he knows as a geologist because he is an expert geologist based on the land when he goes there personally and studies and does his science on the rocks and everything, he sees that this is the first born among the continents. America, so far as her physical history is concerned, has been falsely denominated the new world. All right. It has been falsely denominated, falsely, falsely. All right. It's not a new world. That's false. Break the spell. That's false. Hers was the first dry land, okay? Hers was the first dry land lifted out of the waters. Lifted out of the waters. Hers, the first shore washed by the ocean that enveloped all the earth beside. And while Europe was represented only by islands rising here and there, you hear what he's saying? Europe was still just little islands rising here and there. Above the sea, America already stretched an unbroken line of land from Nova Scotia to the far west, okay? To the far west. This is the oldest land, okay? So Louis Agassiz, I believe, was referring to an area called the Laurentian Mountains. Uh, it says here, a mountain range in southern Quebec, Canada, north of the St. Lawrence River and Ottawa River rising to the highest point of 1,166 meters at Mount Royal Blanchard, northeast of Quebec City. Now down here it says the Laurentian mountain range is one of the oldest mountain ranges in the world. You see, we ain't just making things up. It contains rock deposits before the Cambrian period, all right, before that. The Laurentians are the central part of the Greenville, Oregon, dating back to around a billion years. Now, what I want to show you is you see, guys, the image right here where they're saying it's the Laurentian range, and it actually extends even more. This is a close up of what I wanted you to see is the circle right here. Do you guys see the circle right here? All right. So shout out to UBTB, UB News, good brother. He did a great, great video back then about the Tower of Babel and its location. Yeah, this is the circle we were just looking at. You see this perfect circle? And you know what this mountain is called here, guys? It's called Mount Babel. Mount Babel. All right, let me go back to the other image. You see that circle, as you guys can see, is part of that mountain range. If this is the oldest land in Babel, right? Babylon, the Tower of Babel, was from an old, old time. It kind of makes sense. It's starting to make sense. And you see this? Why would they name this Mount Babel? Now it says here, the Laurentians, a very concise history, part one, very, very long ago, over a billion years at least, the first mountain range on Earth, the first mountain range on Earth was squeezed upward by the movements of tectonic plates deep in the surface of the planet. These first mountains are still here, although altered by ancient volcanic activity and worn and scraped by several ice ages in Quebec, this mountainous area is called the Laurentians. So we go back to the book Geological Sketches by Louis Agassiz from 1873, very scholarly book. All right, one of the most famous geologists. He confirmed America is the first born among the continents, the oldest land. All right, and seems to be in Canada, right? Matching what we read about the oldest water in Canada. All right, so we have the oldest water and we got land, we know water brings life, right? Wouldn't that bring agriculture and, you know, animals and life, all different kinds of species? So eventually that would mean that we would have the oldest fossils, that we can prove that, right? Oldest fossils. So we're in SciNews.com or Sci-News.com, all right? Science News. It says world's oldest known fossils found in Canada. Again, guys. Push evidence for life back 70 million years. Oh, we just keep rewriting history every time we find something new in America, right? Again, world's oldest known fossils, okay? An international team of paleontologists has discovered in Quebec, Canada, the oldest physical evidence of life on Earth. 
fossils that date back 3.77 billion years. The discovery was reported online today in the journal Nature. Microscope, all right, this is an image they got, it says microscopic filaments and tubes formed by ancient iron loving bacteria were found encased in quartz layers in the Nouveau Gitude supercrustal belt. The NSB contains some of the oldest sedimentary rocks known on the planet, all right, known on the planet, oldest rocks known on the planet, which likely form part of an iron-rich hydrothermal vent system that provided a habitat for Earth's first life forms between 3.77 and 4.3 billion years ago. Before this find, the earliest accepted evidence for life were 3.7 billion years old stromatolite fossils from the Iswa Greenstone Belt in southwest Greenland. All right, so check this out. Greenland ain't that far. This is still kind of part of America. Greenland is right next to us, right? So before that, it was in Greenland, and then they found it in Canada. So it's still around this area, right? Not in Africa, not in the Middle East, not in Asia, over there, Southeast. Our discovery supports the idea that life emerged from hot seafloor vents shortly after planet Earth formed, said Matthew Dodd, a PhD student at the University of College London and first author on the study. The speedy appearance of life on Earth fits with other evidence of recently discovered 3.7 billion year old cemetery mounds that were shaped by microorganisms. Dodd and co-authors found the filaments and tubes inside cent centimeter-sized structures called concretions or nodules, as well as other tiny spheroidal structures called rosettes and granules, all of which they think are the products of putrefaction. They are mineralogically identical to those in jungle rocks from Norway, the Great Lakes area of North America and Western Australia, said study lead author Dr. Dominic Papinio, also from the University College London. We have discovered microfossils that are composed of hematite. Basically, it's uh, uh, iron oxide. It's like rust. Through laser imaging of the samples, we were able to identify the microfossils as the oldest known microfossils on it. This is a slab that's been polished. There are these structures here. It is cut on the right hand side, but you can see kind of a, a structure that bends the layering in this rock. And it is within these features in part that we find the microfossils. In diameter, the microfossils are uh, half the width of a human hair. They can be anything up to half a millimeter in length. The microfossils we discovered are uh, about 300 million years older than the previously thought oldest microfossils. These rocks have a minimum age of 3.77 billion years, but some scientists in the field consider them to be as old as 4.28 billion years. So they are uh, within a few hundred million years from within the accretion of the solar system and of planet Earth and the sun and the moon and so on. These rocks are being mostly composed of silica and hematite, this iron rust, we find these kinds of environments today uh, in the vicinity of hydrothermal vents, either in the deep ocean and in some places not in so deep uh, localities that uh, exhale a lot of iron particulates in water. And uh, this is thought to be the, the material that these bacteria actually eat and breathe. The rocks are located in uh, the province of Quebec on the shoreline near to the Nastapoca Islands. All right. So, you know, you heard it from the horse's mouth themselves. The scientists telling you oldest, oldest fossils here. We're in lifescience.com. They're also reporting the world's oldest fossils, possibly uncovered in Canada. Okay. Same stuff here. This is in worldfossilsociety.org. WFS News, world's oldest fossils found in Canada with a question mark. Yes. Yeah, so the scientists are definitely letting you know. Scientists say they have found the world's oldest fossils thought to have formed between 3.77 billion and 4.28 billion years ago, all right? Canada, oldest land, right? And oldest water. It makes sense, it's all coming together, right? Popo Vu, the Maya Quiche knew what they were talking about. The brighter side dot news, fossil discovery substantially rewrites history of life on earth, okay? 
substantially rewrites history. We've been rewriting history in this channel since day one. For the study published in Science Advances, the research team analyzed a fist-sized rock from Quebec, Canada, estimated to be between 3.75 and 4.28 billion years old. In an earlier Nature paper, the team found tiny filaments, knobs, and tubes in the rock, which appeared to have been made by bacteria. All right, so we got the oldest water, we got the oldest land, we got the oldest fossils. Do you see the pattern here? Now, a lot of you have seen my ancient American origin uh, videos. We've proven that mammals and a lot of species of animals came out of America, all right? So mammals, right? So it makes sense because we got the oldest fossils in Canada, microorganisms, you know, eventually these develop into things, right? Now we go down to the part where it says here, evolution or origins, right? Origins, right? Origins of mammals, pay attention. Synopsida, a clay that contains mammals and their extinct relatives originated during the Pennsylvanian sub-period. Pennsylvanian sub-period, 323 million to 300 million years ago when they split from the reptile lineage. And it says here that the first fully terrestrial vertebrates were amniotes. Amniotes are a clade of tetrapod vertebrates that comprise sauropsids and synopsids. They are distinguished by a membrane amnion protecting the embryo and lack of a larval stage. Because of this trait, amniotes lay eggs on land or retain them within the mother. All right, so unlike the anamniotes, it says here, it keeps going. You guys can go ahead and uh, check that out. The first amniotes apparently arose in the Pennsylvanian sub-period of the Carnivorous, all right? Why is it called Pennsylvanian? Because that's where it was. A lot of people, you know, try to debate me when I did my animals video saying, that just means a geological period. It doesn't actually mean Pennsylvania. Well, you're wrong. We're in the uh, Natural History Museum, Pennsylvania sub-period, Carboniferous Tropical Forest, now it says here, the Pennsylvanian saw the disappearance of the warm, shallow seas of the Mississippian, okay, causing a dramatic change in marine life. The warm, clear seas of the Mississippian gave way to cool, muddy waters, resulting in a decline in crinoid from which they never recovered. Now, listen to this. Why are they calling the Mississippi seas, right? The Mississippian seas? It was seas before? On land, coal... Right, the coal swamp forest thrived during this period. The dead plant material was laid down in huge amounts, gradually forming today's coal. Insects ruled the air, so there was just insects. Tropical forests of this period provided the plant matter that later became the great coal deposits of America and Europe. All right, North America and all that was tropical. That's so why we had jaguars and all that, and they originated in North America. These rich deposits make these forest plants some of the best known in Earth's history. Dominant plants included giant club mosses and horsetail tree ferns, seed fern and cordiates, conifer-like trees. Specimens of all but cordiates are displayed in this case. Late Pennsylvania temperature forests were dominated by cordiates. The vast amount of carbon deposited as coal rather than carbonate released oxygen into the atmosphere, increasing atmospheric oxygen to 35% versus 21% today. All right, so listen, we had more oxygen. What does that do? That helps things grow. That's why we had large trees. Future video were mountains, large animals, large plants, even giants, right? This allowed the evolution of giant invertebrates. For example, dragonflies with 70 centimeters, 29 inch wingspans and two meter long millipedes. All right, you guys paying attention? When we had larger trees, Pennsylvanian forests, and swamps were home to a rich diversity of animals. Okay, listen, we're not just talking about a, a, a period. We're actually talking about Pennsylvania. Pay attention, all right? That's where mammals came out first. Pennsylvania, vertebrates, particularly wind insects. Insects and other anthropods were the main herbivores. Vertebrates had not yet evolved the complex digestive strategies needed to eat plants. This period is known as the age of amphibians due to their numbers and variety. These animals ate insects, other anthropods, and each other. A crucial development of this period was the evolution of the land-adapted membrane-enclosed amniotic 
egg. I remember cats and mammals come out of this, allowing animals to live away from the water. Where did this happen, guys? This happened in Pennsylvania, that area right there. This advance enabled the eventual conquest of land by reptiles, mammals, and birds. All right. So, what does it say here? The Pennsylvanian or the Pennsylvanian, right? Geology. So, as it says down here, the Pennsylvanian was named for the coal bearing beds in Pennsylvania. These coal bearing beds was what helped these animals settle, right? Start laying eggs and land. It all happened here. All right. Pennsylvanian geology. It was an actual place here on Earth. So if everything started out in Africa and South Africa and all that stuff, uh, Australia, they could have named it Australian Carboniferous or African Carboniferous period. Instead, they know where it happened in the Pennsylvania area. Named for the cold bearing beds in Pennsylvania by J.J. Stevenson in 1888. So basically, the world's oldest uh, list is starting to add up here in America. If you guys are still not seeing the correlation and the obvious truth, right, as to where humans might have actually originated from or started their civilizations, then you are not paying attention and you're just practicing cognitive dissonance because the study, the research, everything is showing Everything is pointing closer to home over here, not in other parts of the world. So oldest water, the oldest land, the oldest fossils, the oldest mammals, the first mammals. So that includes carnivores, you know, every type of ant, mammal you can think of. So we have all this life and origin and creation here in America. Why wouldn't humans also have come out of here? We have corn, right? We've proven agriculturally Right, we have proven this agriculturally as well. We got most of the plants of the world. Just to correlate with that, I wanted to read from this book. It's called The American Past, A Survey of American History, Volume 1 to 1877. And so it says here, feeding the world. America contributed few food animals to world larders, but American plant foods revolutionized European african and asian diets all right even african maize indian corn and american native astonished europeans by the height of its stalks and the size of its grain cultivation of the crop spread to every continent increasing the food supply and contributing to the runaway increase in population that characterizes the last 500 years of human history so you see how important corn was just corn alone and if you saw my corn videos you know it proves this is the old world the beginning of a civilization was through agriculture and you just read it right here in this book it's telling us because of the increase of food supply that it creates this uh, plant this miracle plant right the plant of the gods the sacred tree in a lot of these places in the old world is actually a uh, uh, a maize plant or a corn plant all right so let's continue it says the sweet potato became a staple in west africa all right so even the sweet potato it became a staple in west africa where it was introduced by slave traders so it happened the opposite way he's saying all right the jam superficially similar was already established there okay so they had jam it says bean squash and pumpkins peppers strawberries there was a European strawberry, but it was inferior to the American. And then vanilla, chocolate, wild rice, and tomatoes are American foods. All those foods you heard, right? That were unknown in Europe, Africa, and Asia before 1492, it says there, right? You know, I highly doubt that, honestly. I know that these foods were probably there longer. Uh, I mean, way before 1492, but they did originate from America. Now listen to this part. Of 640 food crops grown in Africa today, almost 600 of them originated in the Americas. Again, of 640 food crops grown in Africa today, almost 600 of them originated in the Americas. So you're saying only 40 of them did not? So 600 of their food crops 
are American of origin. So what does that tell you? Who is older? Where did it originate? All right, so who was growing food first? These kind of plants. Who domesticated all these plants first? That means who was doing agriculture first? That means who created the first civilizations? All right, all correlating, right? It says the manioc, tapioca, also of American origin, is today a staple for 200 million people in the tropics. Again, the manioc, the tapioca, also of American origin is today a staple for 200 million people in the tropics. The white Irish potato, a native of the Andes, provides basic subsistence for even greater numbers. All right, so the potato, it's not Irish. So with all this abundance of food we had, you don't think we could have settled down, we had humans here to cultivate all this stuff and take advantage of? Why would the Most High, why would the Great Spirit put all this food far away from where humans are and it didn't happen that way it's where the humans actually were the origin of everything of the first land first water mammals first fossils all that as the popo vu stated the fruits the animals the people everything the whole land so eventually we are going to settle down we are going to create civilizations we've already shown the oldest monuments Caral Supe, Peru, is one of the oldest pyramids in the world. The oldest mummies, the oldest mummies in the world here in America. Again, the list is adding up. Got to dodge your own hijack and do the research. Break the spell.